topic of event because um, it's, the, it's the outcome of the recent ideas competition. Um, it's a topical event because a lot of people who are uh, recently associated with UCD or still associated with UCD or consider themselves associated with UCD were um, variously successful in this competition. And it's a topical event because I've just left the fifth year studio where people are thinking about how to put their work together to present their work at the, at the end of the year. And I think it's interesting to see how um, people who have been very recently involved in that um, cycle communicate their work in a wider framework than outside the university. So can I say it's, it's a real pleasure to see um, so many recent graduates do put themselves forward and engage in this debate about which was arranged around the uh, ghost of the central bank. And what we have this evening are seven presentations um, by uh, seven sets of people. There's a strict control on it, which is time. Uh, eight minutes means eight minutes. And um, Michael asked me to prepare this meeting, but I know it's really just asked me to mind the time. So we have seven presentations lasting eight minutes each. And at the end, then, I think uh, we'll have a chance to discuss, or you'll have a chance from the floor to ask questions, or people can discuss with each other um, what it is that they've shown. Um, we also have the uh, winner of the competition to conclude the proceedings, but it doesn't matter that they won. We're here, we're here to discuss it. It's great that they won. But we're here to discuss the ideas that are arising. We're not rerunning the assessment of the competition, and we're not about to say, why didn't that one win, or anything like that. We're delighted that GK and D won the competition. Um, so it's my pleasure, okay, to introduce the various speakers, and the first of them are from the group of practice. Uh, that's Emily Conway, Dan Munich, Lavelle, Brian Barber, and Joe Swan. And, uh, is called Practice. Uh, it's formed of myself, Amy Conway, Dominic Lavelle, uh, Joe Swan, uh, Brendan Ward, and Jamie Young. Uh, this was our final board presentation for the Central Bank competition. Um, so we're going to go through the process we went uh, to formulate our final ideas in this competition. Uh, this is the Central Bank as it is at the minute. Uh, the problem we identified with is that there was a disconnect between the building itself and the street level. We decided on a spatial strategy um, that would connect the two, and by solving that, a brief would follow later. Um, this is the condition as we see it at the moment, where you've got the court and the street level at the front completely isolated from the building itself. We, we, we wanted to connect these two, so we looked at a series of vertical connections um, that would integrate them. These are a couple of ideas that we worked through, such as a tower connected to the outside of the building. An internal um, stairs formed in the central atrium. Uh, a series of cuts made in the slabs with a series of vertical connections, um, possibly a ramp, and in addition to the outside of the building. The problem with each of these ideas, we felt, was that there was a disconnect um, with our central concept and what the result resulted, and that was each of them was an addition and they weren't using the logic of the construction of the building. This is our central idea that we want to capture, it's literally bring the building down to street level and to light to. Uh, this would be much like a puppet on a string where we wanted to animate the limbs of the building and to breathe life into it. This is made possible from the logic of the construction. Uh, each of these plates is supported by a cable uh, hung from the top hat of the central bank. Um, and the actual construction of the central bank is very light. You've got two central cores and a series of trusses that come out to this um, perimeter truss. So it's a very lightweight construction. And this was when 
what, what it looked like during the construction process. These are the se uh, a series of images that show the construction process from 1972 to 78. So the two cores were built in the top hat. The slabs uh, or plates were formed on the ground level. The cables were put in place. The cables then lifted the slabs up, and this results in the building we have today. Our idea is a partial reversal of this process, which is bringing the plates back down to ground level, um, a partial deconstruction of them, uh, lifting these plates and placing them into position, and then each of the plates become connected, forming a continuous circulation route from the bottom core to the street level up to the top of the building. This is the parallel plates as they exist at the minute in the central bank, and our idea is to rotate them every second one in an alternate uh, axis. So first to X, second to Y, third, and so on and so on as you go up the building. This will form a single point of connection on each of the slabs, um, connecting them the whole way through the building. Uh, this is the perimeter slab existing, and below it has we proposed how to do it. So we tilt them, and we form, within the depth of the structure, trees, three large steps on each side of the building. This forms a continuous route up through it. And this is the resulting view uh, from Main Street. As you can see, the bottom of the plate was the most important one. Uh, this uh, flows down, addresses the court, addresses out, um, and it forms an auditorium and gives a function to that front courtyard. This is how it looks in the model. So, this is the beginning of the route up through the building. We spiral around two cores. And Continue up and up and up and up. Uh, here's a sequence of views showing the variations of space that we uh, that, that are, are created by the tilting slab. Uh, to the outside, you get very um, airy, large spaces. To the middle, you get slightly more sheltered, more contained spaces. Each of them taking a view out over the city. Um, and briefs will be applied to this uh, as people inhabit the building. So this is the final image from the um, Temple Bar. It looks up to um, the building and it kind of summarises what we were trying to achieve. Instead of it being a heavy, closed street institutional building, we create a light, open to the street uh, city building. And by combining all these ideas and the images, it results in this our final sheet. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Um, we're thinking about moving out of it. Um, and it just seemed to me, in the light of all that had happened in Ireland uh, in previous years, that it was likely that the central bank were moving because the building was coming to a point in its life where it would need substantial investment and a major decision would have to be taken about what to do with it. Um, I both quite like the building. Uh, I found it hard to imagine it as anything else other than the central bank. So, of course, the competition found me trying to sort of convince myself about that as I went along. Um, in any case, uh, I started out looking at the construction of the building over time. There was a CISC video which about kind of astonishing. Uh, the document, the full thing, described the two, tower, the two sort of central cores, having built the first one in nine days and the second one in five. <coughs> uh, and then a fairly relatively rapid uh, construction period after that. Uh, obviously, Building slabs initially on the ground in, in sets of three and then jacking them into place. Um, so I, I suppose I, was, I started thinking about where some of these ideas were coming from, what the origins of them might have been. Um, obviously, there were fairly recent, uh, sort of robust structural schemes where the structural idea was the building. Uh, Lena Bobardi's um, museum of modern art had been built about four years before. And, uh, where you have this great big elevated gallery that's hoisted up over public space and you have this entirely clear urban space and in a way the city is sort of notionally it's hardly interrupted at all. Um, Central Bank obviously borrows some very old ideas um, such as Lee Tender's office building from 1923 
Um, and in the case of the central bank, you can offer a lot of services that you wouldn't have had back then, but it is striking that the depth of the floor plate and the depth of the actual space inside the building uh, wasn't so different. Uh, the floor plate being 1.8 deep, and the actual clear span internally is only uh, 2.1. Uh, so I find that kind of striking and, and unusual for uh, buildings. Um, but the thing with the central bank then is, is that you have this very clear structural idea that by the time the building is filled, finished, uh, it is a slightly different thing. It's not so obvious what's going on. Um, and then after the original building, an awful lot of other things happened, uh, including the rebuilding of the commercial buildings as they were known, uh, which is largely a new building. I think it uses part of uh, a much older building on site. Which also find that the sort of the space between the two cores is filled up, um, but of course on the part of the central plan, but obviously the plaza was filled in with the uh, railings and various other things to kind of keep people away from it ever since. So my first move was to consider what would happen if you took away this building, and I thought that it could actually make quite a dramatic difference to the thing in that where central bank might have originally planned to have this large urban space around it, and that in a way the entire race on deck for raising the thing up would have been to create this space, and some way that idea seems to have been lost. So, so for me, the first move was to clear the way. And I kind of thought that you would actually, in doing that, you do end up with a large, square, urban space that would make a dramatic difference to the city. Um, and then my first reaction after that was that it would be very nice to green the thing. Um, sorry. Uh, and that it might form part of a series of uh, urban spaces across the city. So, uh, I wasn't the only person to think of uh, dropping of the, or jacking most of the floors down so that you get this solid bulk at ground level, which is elevated slightly so people can get in, and that you'd have this elevated park uh, over the city, but that also it might be part of a, a sort of a larger network of green spaces, which I think are important because uh, an awful lot of the but well, not for the green spaces in Dublin, where you have to sort of go into the course. What would have been nice about this one would be that it's something that you go through in the daily course of uh, living in the city. I mean, this forms a very important part of a lot of people's routes, pedestrian routes through the city. Um, in any case, I had a suspicion about what might actually grow or not grow uh, in that. So I started then going back to my initial interest in the uh, level, floor levels. Um, and how you might sort of loosen the building up uh, so that you could start to think about what program might be suitable for the building. Uh, so my idea then was just to take out every second floor uh, and that you would be left with these great big south-facing uh, spaces uh, that would make the building attractive to a whole heap of different uses and also that you would start to uh, inhabit the roof. Um, I initially thought about having some kind of a park landscape in amongst that great roof truss structure. Uh, and I thought that probably wasn't going to be viable, so that it might be better to look at a kind of a continuous around ziggurat type structure where you would have this great walk over the city of Dublin. Um, I've also cleared away the space underneath the building, and you get much more sort of continuous uh, urban realm underneath the thing. Uh, <coughs> in terms of program, then, my feeling was that the, for the building to survive, better if the thing would divide it up into a number of different functions. Uh, so uh, I think the idea that we floated in a library is probably not a bad one, even though people don't borrow books, I thought we used it as a place to go and read one. Um, or for example, I was found myself being kicked out of the National Library for using a pen, so I thought it would be nice to have somewhere that you could go and read a book with a pen. Um, so put that on the top, um, I also had an idea about the sustainable energy showroom where people would actually go and see things that might uh, help them reduce their uh, carbon footprints, and if the people, people saw them physically, might make them sort of paralyzed. Um, I put a restaurant in there, I kept a little vestige in the office space. Um, the other thing to say, of course, is about the hedge. Um, I was thinking about the it opening up these spaces in the front of the building. Uh, there would clearly be required balustrades, and that, that would actually have quite a dramatic uh, effect on the elevation of the building. So I suppose my initial idea or reaction to green the space came back at that point and I thought about covering the whole thing in hedges which can be clipped and it sort of maintains a clear modernist uh, language for the thing. That's the building um, with a large open space and I think 
But I think what I found most interesting about the whole thing is just the removal of this one building does open up the space to be so that it can be perceived as one public space, uh, as opposed to just sort of uh, vestigial space left around the, the roots of the building.
And we thought of the adjacent urban blocks of, uh, as um, gardenless plots, or gar uh, apartment dwelling garden gardenless plots in the city. Um, we thought of a, uh, the idea of an allotment as a way of kind of uh, as a way of everybody having a piece of garden in the city. So you're all very welcome to our handy step-by-step -step guide on how to convert a central bank into allotment gardens. Um, step one, we begin by considering each floor as an individual entity stacked one above the other. Each floor is then stripped of its essential structure, laid out on 1.5 meter grid, a pattern of steel trusses provides an order. The remaining exposed deep beams offer the opportunity to insert new forms and functions. A system of troughs is fitted into the existing structure, each a 1.5 meter squared module designed as a receptacle for soil and water. Um, this patchwork of allotments allows access to new ground. Floor space becomes landscape occupied by neighboring blocks of residents without a plot to unearth. Every second floor is for preparation, a room shared for washing, shopping, or bagging before the journey home. Here, only the space between the concrete core is occupied while the surrounding facade of glass is pulled back and the remaining truss is externalized. The result is a change in section. A double height volume mediates the edge between inside and out, between upstairs and down. Sunlight, rainfall, and natural ventilation filter through from above while the facade shelters gardeners below. This pattern of intervention repeats throughout the building, floor by floor, transforming this former office plan, both spatially and functionally. Okay, so to explain uh, those steps in a more detail, um, we became kind of obsessed with the 1.5 by 1.5 grid, uh, which the central bank was based. So, taking that existing grid, we decided to insert a series of sunken, um, insert a series of uh, steel troughs into which plants would sit. Uh, to access them, we made a series of sunken uh, timber-lined walkways, which um, which accommodate storage, uh, working areas, and the obligatory uh, UC bench. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, if we go to the next slide there, uh, we see how between floor level and ceiling level, um, a process of subtraction is is dealt with, and then effectively our site is within the 850 mm structural zone of, uh, of the floor. So there's also an idea there about um, water collection and recycling that uh, troughs, um, these troughs that encircle the building will collect, will collect water and they will pass through uh, a system of rainwater recycling uh, that's again contained in the, in the structural zone of the floor. Um, so, looking out, then um, we again we strip away, <coughs> we strip away, um, we, we retain the structure, uh, the, the necessary structure um, above above edge, uh, taking out, taking away the floors, making a double height space. Um, we strip away the, the the upper level, the upper fenestration, which allows uh, air and rain and light in, but we keep uh, we keep the windows. Um, we keep the windows to the level of the troughs. Um, the idea with that is that it will kind of provide some level of shelter to uh, patrons of the building. So our final project then um, is an architecture of occupation which makes use of existing forms. Structure and elevation is respected and maintained. A ground is made, a data restored, and a community formed. Um, okay, this is the, the uh, sheet I submitted for the competition. Um, my proposal is to relocate uh, the Irish Museum of Modern Art from Royal Hospital Domain uh, to Central Bank buildings. Um, the uh, in the opened in 1991, Royal Hospital and uh, Domain. Science Ireland's leading uh, national uh, institution for the collection and uh, presentation of modern contemporary art. Um, uh, for two reasons why I was to move it is the location and its suitability for uh, purpose. Uh, so the location, um, because I'm 
is a little bit too far out of town, it doesn't get the numbers it deserves. So I, I felt that it, it would be um, better suited to bring, bring it into town. Um, at the moment, the uh, central bank buildings are a financial institution on uh, Dane Street, and I thought it was an opportunity to make a, a cultural institution at the heart of the Temple Bar. Um, so, showing the uh, approach there on the left coming from uh, Cross Liffey and on foot. Um, so, that there's two main entrances. From Coke Street and from the, from the plaza. Um, then, um, so my main moves on the, from the plaza were to, to remove the steps and the railings, uh, bringing the main entrance down to the ground um, and open, give it a lot more space than up to the public the, the plaza. Um, as well as the gallery space, there's, there's uh, bars, or the bar, restaurant, um, shop, uh, cafe. Um, so on the first floor of the tower, I put the uh, shop, cafe, and uh, media lounge. Um, on the top floor of the tower is a restaurant, and um, in the commercial buildings, there's a uh, gallery space. Uh, so then the uh, main gallery space then. Uh, let me do some work at the uh, Royal Hospital because it's, um, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's designed as a hospital and it's not designed for modern and contemporary art. Uh, so uh, there's two main types of spaces in, in my proposal. One is uh, a white cube, which is um, uh, and strips everything away, it just gives a, a white uh, plane. Backdrop for um, for the art on show. It's, it's more about um, having good quality light and and no distractions. So the, the example is a Renzo Piano's Central Hall in Bern, Switzerland. Uh, and here's a uh, visualization of what that space might look like in the in the central bank. Of, so taking out. Uh, one of the floor plates and uh, the double height space and the walls then are suspended from the ceilings taken from the language of the building uh, and it, it makes more flexible space so the walls can be placed where best suits the art on the display. Um, the other type of space for contemporary art is uh, black box. Um, Types of arts change from performance uh, to video and installations. Um, good quality lighting is not a requirement anymore. It's, it's just a, a all round environmental uh, control. So it's more of like a um, theatre space. An uh, example of this type of space would be uh, the tanks at uh, Tate Modern. Um, so um, this is the visualization of that space. This is the, um, the double or the two floors of, of car park below the plaza and then converted into a double mileage space for the, um, the black box space. And that's, that's it. Thank you. This part is, you know, it's, it's maybe unusual in this in that it, it kind of started out with the potential client in mind. Um, I was contacted by the gallery photography who were very ambitious uh, bunch of people for promoting photography Ireland um, who have a, a goal to make a, a centre for photography as opposed to uh, just a gallery and um, I really liked the idea of trying it and uh, was working with Sarah McKendry, uh, who had been in touch with Andrea and Kate about possibly doing a project. So we all got together and um, decided to give it a go. Um, 
the, so there is uh, kind of a, a, a rough brief uh, in existence for, for this project. Um, one of the things that uh, they always talk about um, is that uh, photography is, is a medium which uh, is accessible to, to everybody. It's a very democratic medium. You can produce work in, a very, in this medium very easily and can communicate with this medium very easily. And it becomes more and more uh, common for people to do this. So, uh, in translating this uh, function uh, of the central photography to, to the central bank, um, we kind of we had this in mind and we really wanted to, uh, I suppose, attack it with a bit of democracy and um, to try and uh, push and pull it to. Uh, as a lot of people have done already to connect more with the with what happens on the ground. So this is one of the primary thing, primary things that you see in the in the uh, in the board here. Um, and that is to uh, take this this view, this uh, this amazing view that you get from the top of the building <coughs> over the city, which is a really privileged position to be in, uh, and bring it down to ground level. Um, so what we proposed was. Um, uh, kind of clearing out the, uh, the centre of the of the building between the two quarters, uh, so there's a void right from the top to the bottom, and installing gigantic uh, mirrors in this void um, to bring uh, a view from what's above the city down to the ground level, and vice versa. Um, kind of a pair of uh, technicalities of which. Um, We'll take a little bit of work here, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm firmly convinced it's possible. Um, so, uh, you know, some rough, uh, quick ideas of what might uh, happen when you walk past in the square below. Um, actually, what's interesting about the, the bringing down of the, of the, the level of the, of the access point to ground level, we thought that if, by using this type of um, Kind of enticing uh, in the image that, 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 that would be projected from above, it might be better to keep it at a height. So um, we kind of stuck with the steps the way they are. And um, yeah, and then up above, um, what you see below. And to actually get this to work properly, what you probably need to do is work quite hard with um, the humble guys and uh, develop a mirror that would uh, actually be focused enough to, to do this properly. Um, and then we also, will I pass this over to you? I'll pass it over to you. Uh, this is a more obscure at the front of the building, which we as a multi Yeah, so basically, we kind of thought about the experience on the ground floor, and as Ross said, we kind of had this idea that that um, an openness in the panorama, kind of, that was essential to the idea of the original building would be kind of uh, exposed, exposed in their intervention. And so it was kind of about a physical and also a psychological kind of getting it from underneath the shadows and kind of bringing the whole building to life and kind of making it an instrument. So you kind of saw the whole thing with a bit of a camera, I suppose. So we kind of installed a camera obscure um, at kind of, I think it's over three levels and it looks out onto the end street. So it kind of captures what's going on in the square. So it captures all the seasons and just comings and goings of people. And so that's kind of... Yeah, so as you come in, you can see the, the mirror and then the punctured and a void in the center of each of the four lights to form a periscope. So there's a stairs winds up, winds around this, this uh, mirror as we go into the floors. And um, so then, uh, this is a typical floor plan showing the camera obscure. And also we've taken the cores, we've kind of maintained the outside as kind of then this kind of library function, meeting rooms and study areas. So it's quite, even though it is a gallery of photography, it also has, you know, it's 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 a place for everyone that they can come to basically and you know, kind of has workshops and things like that as well. So the central cores would be used, like there's we all you have stairs in the middle and we already have another stairs in one of the cores and we decided to take one of the cores and make it kind of a dark room, so the darker spaces like electric theatre, you need dark room, photography and things like that. So it was just about kind of ordering the space in terms of 
and what goes on in the, in the that's the top floor, which kind of doubles up as a restaurant and it's an observation deck. So you can see from that space. Um, by looking at the window, you can see the skyline and also um, looking at the area, you can see the public sphere of everyone. And there's kind of a gallery space, and the whole idea is that the gallery space is kind of combined with teaching spaces, and this kind of filters up the chair. It's, it's kind of a, an interesting, uh, like we were interesting very early on about how this kind of idea of the horizontality of the of the plates and how, mm -hmm. like you know, they are kind of sacrosanct in one sense, but we definitely took the opinion that you could punch through them and maybe kind of spaces in some places that go over a couple of different uh, floor levels and allow people to trickle through the building yeah. at various different points rather than being uh, tied to one particular area of access in each building. We also um, we made a model and then we kind of placed some areas in front of it and had one quick photography. Yes, <laughs> so that, that's true. Yeah. Well, it, it's a, yeah, it's a, what do you call it, a relief model, is that correct? Or a sectional, sectional model based on uh, prospects with photographs of the square and Current youth of Ireland are going to school behind fences. New schools are being built on greenfield sites as secured precincts, separated from any connection with urban life. Schools should provide the first spaces of socialization for our children first spaces where they engage with society beyond the home, but instead are being designed devoid of any sense of conviviality and communication. The education system should seek to gradually integrate individuals into the community, teaching them to be socially responsible without repressing their individuality. The school buildings we make should seek to support this aspiration. We see the central bank site as offering an opportunity to make a new kind of school, a secondary school for an open urban society. It can become a clear symbol that education offers the means of recovery from our economic crisis. Transforming an institution that has failed us all into the means for our collective restitution. We do not approach this as a conservation project. Instead, we adopt a pragmatic attitude and seek to use the structure and materials of the existing building to make a new school. The emphasis is on transformation rather than preservation, making the very best use of an existing resource in recessionary times. The top drawing shows the existing section of the central bank, which we've seen a number of times, with its double basement containing the vaults and car parking, and with the upper office floors suspended from the giant roof structure. In our project, we have taken the Department of Education brief that was used for the RII schools competition last year and fitted it into the existing building. And working with an existing building often presents opportunities and strategies that would not present themselves in a new build project. In this case, fundamentally challenging the arrangement of a secondary school, while at the same time still operating more or less with the prescribed brief. So in our project, and I know this drawing is, is kind of unclear, 
But um, in our project, the existing steps and entrance to the central plan <coughs> are removed. And large voids are made in the urban floor to open up the basements below. We make a new roof between the street level and the soffit of the upper office floors that spans across the site and provides a light-filled cover to the main public spaces of the school. The GP room and sports hall are located at the basement level but can be viewed into from the street. Equally, the students can watch the world go by as they are dining or playing sports in the lower levels. The plan is that these spaces would invite the city in and potentially become facilities for all the citizens, becoming, for instance, a place for an amateur drama production or a market or a community meeting room. In the grand plan, we make an entrance courtyard onto Dame Street with a bridge connection to the main entrance lobby which is located between the existing cores. The entrance court bridge and entrance lobby all overlook the GP room and sports hall at the level below. The intention was that this whole ground floor could be thought of as a kind of covered square for the city and would be the main social space of the school. We are looking at the projects of the Brazilian architect Villanova Artigas and the way that he makes schools with this incredible sense of spatial generosity and avoids making any vertical obstructions. Somehow in these projects there is this incredible feeling of conviviality, of casual meetings and a sense that all activities are valid. So we would like the lower the ground floor and the central square of this project to have that sense and to act as a space of public appearance, a true democratic space for the city. The classrooms and teaching spaces are accommodated in the upper levels of the existing building. This would allow the students to feel connected to the city and would also help to develop their social awareness by, by allowing them to feel part of something greater than their own immediate environment. There is a seven metre depth between the existing circulation cores and the glass facade and interestingly this works very well with the Department of Education prescribed classroom sizes. The building envelope is manipulated at these levels pulling in to make gardens and to make voids, creating spaces that have a connection to the city below. We make reference to the open air school in Amsterdam, designed by Jan Leiker in the late 1920s. The classrooms in this school are organized vertically, with two internal classrooms per floor, opening, it, opening out onto south-facing external teaching spaces. In the same way that Richard Neutra in his Los Angeles Emerson Middle School of 1938 makes classrooms that can extend to the outside, we are also trying to open up these upper classroom levels and make connections between the individual levels and between the school and the city. We want to encourage more families to live in the city centre than we need to provide more schools and more family-oriented facilities. We would argue that the transformation of the central bank into a school would counter the tendency to showcase the city centre for tourist and commercial activities to the detriment of the more ordinary requirements of the citizens. At the scale of the city, we see the public spaces of the school connecting to the very important civic space of College Green and to the urban rooms of Trinity College. It is intended that the public could pass through the lobby areas at ground floor level, so that the building could continue to act as an entranceway to Temple Bar. This concept is illustrated in this diagram where the public route traverses the ground floor. We are deliberately trying to counter the 
sense of the school as an isolated precinct, separated from city life. At the same time, the required privacy and security associated with the school building can be achieved by restricting access to the upper levels and to the basement levels, thereby allowing the public to engage with, but not inhibit, the functioning of the school. The circulation spaces themselves are designed as social areas, as gathering spaces for a different type of learning. This is evident in this recent school by Architema Architects in Denmark, the Hellrup School in Copenhagen. This nighttime perspective shows the ground floor spaces as light-filled, active spaces inviting the city in. The building does not present a front door, but instead is presented as a continuation of the street into the public rooms. The school is visually and physically connected to the city. As Michael mentioned at the outset, the reuse of an existing building can offer opportunities to challenge the nature of an institution in ways that new growth projects often do not. In the case of the Central Bank building, it presents the possibility of making a new kind of secondary school, one that, that is located in the city centre, is organised vertically rather than horizontally, and most importantly, is open and permeable to the life of the society that surrounds it, rather than isolated behind a metal fence. <laughs> <laughs>